Hey, this is John Morton from The Empire Strikes Back. This is Tom Cook. Hi, I'm Wes Johnson, and this is Click on This Show. Click on This Show. Do it! Do it! May the force be with you. Shotty McFly. We're here at Awesome Con 2021. It is. It feels so great back to be at cons, doesn't it? You know, it feels good to be back here at the cons once at the end. It's a little different this year. You know, we got this thing on our face. We're wearing these masks and everything, and these aren't like the the fancy cosplay masks. But um, we're still having a great time. That's right. We got some great cosplayers that we've been checking out. We got some great interviews, including John Morton, who plays Dak in Empire Strikes Back, and the voice of the Capitals. Wes Johnson, and a lot, lot more here to come. A click on this show and Below the Belt show here at AwesomeCon 2021. All right, this is our first interview at AwesomeCon, guys, here in Washington, D.C with Washington, D.C.'s own Wes Johnson. Wes, hey. isn't it great to have the Comic-Cons back, first of all? First of all, yeah, it is. It's wonderful. I mean, look at all these folks here. You, you've been, we've all been locked down for so long. Right. And as a voice actor, you're locked in a booth by yourself anyway. So it's right. just more of the same, only an extended version of it. To get on here and to meet people who spent a lot of that lockdown with you in the Wastelands or in, in uh, Tamriel or running around with uh, Lucy and Lachance or Shea Gorath. It, it's kind of like old home week, you know? I love it. Now, with the, the lockdown and the pandemic, was voice acting affected at all? Well, there, I mean, the thing about voice acting, what it did change is that we are doing um, our voices from our homes, the home studios. That's what I thought, yeah, exactly. We're not, you're not going out to studios anymore. You're not going right. out to meet people. but technology has become such that we can go yes. right into our own little booth in our home studio, record uh, something in LA and it be like we were right in the room with them. So right. it doesn't affect it. Uh, what it does affect, however, because of the pandemic is that many companies shut down and we're not working. Right. Now they're kind of back up again. And now that we've got a lot of social distancing and a lot of responsible uh, uh, caretaking in place, uh, keeping people in their home studios just makes sense. Absolutely. Well, what can we expect coming up in the voiceover role for you, Wes? Well, I mean, I'm always up for games. If anyone's out there at yes. Awesome Con who's looking to hire a voice, I'm right here. Um, you know, a lot of things that you can't talk about that are of course. out there but maybe haven't happened yet. Uh, I've done some things uh, film-wise. There was like a little uh, pilot in uh, May. And, of course, you and I met on the set of uh, Don't Look Up back uh, about yes. a month ago. And yeah. let's go ahead and get into it. Don't Look Up. It's a huge Netflix film. My Gosh, Leo DiCaprio, Meryl Streep, yes. Jennifer Lawrence, and Tyler Perry. Saying, wow, you were out filming that, West. Did, did, did you get to meet them? I said, oh, yeah. That, invited him back to my house. We made some cocktail weenies. <laughs> we're all fast friends now. We saw no one. And, and, and while we're out on the street, people are walking up going, Who, who's in film? And you tell them, they go, are they here? And you're like, no, it's just me. It's like, okay. <laughs> All right, guys, DCEU has arrived here at Awesome Con. We're here with Batman and Superman. How does it feel to be back on the con scene? The convention scene is back. Feels good. You know, we, everyone kind of took a year off, and uh, we're back, and we're ready to rock and roll. Batman, do you feel the same? Oh, I was counting it down. It, two years without a con, it was right. like, I was, I was really going nuts. Right, right, I was right. going batty. Now, have you guys settled your differences uh, since the last uh, DCEU movie? I guess the Zack Snyder cut, you kind of worked things out together? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we smoothed all that out, and uh, we're good now. Yep. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I just thought he could destroy the world, but... <laughs> he didn't know my mother's name, and now he does, and no, so we're good. Right, right. Yeah. It's a it makes sense because you don't you have the same uh, mother's name? Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? Hey. Could have happened to anybody, you know. Could have happened to anybody. All right. 
it's my pleasure once again to talk to a Star Wars icon and John Morton who plays Dak in Empire Strikes Back. How's, first of all, how does it feel to be back at a convention and at AwesomeCon nonetheless? Well, it's, it's really great to be back at AwesomeCon. This is my fourth time. And honestly, you know, being away from the fans and sort of out of circulation and doing only private signings was very difficult during COVID. Right. So, I mean, we've all had to cope with this. And it's just great being back out here with you all. Yes, we've definitely missed the conventions. And Star Wars being represented so much. I've seen so many Boba Fetts. I've seen so many Jedis. And you actually had the pleasure of um, doing some uh, work in place of Jeremy Bulk, right? Yes. As Boba Fett in, in uh, one of the Star Wars films, yeah, right? Yeah, Jeremy had the opportunity to do two days work in a film. And George was very kind in letting him go for two days. And then uh, they came to me as somebody who was his size. And when I was doing the Dax scenes, we had a lull in our shooting. And so I was just standing around. And they said, would you come in and stand in for Jeremy for the scenes that we did in the carbon freezing chamber? So I had the sublime pleasure of saying to Darth Vader, he's no good to me dead, i.e. doing yes. do it my way, right? And um, it was only years later that I understood what the significance was of this. Uh, oh. That, you know, hey, you know, I'm the only guy that you can think of in the Star Wars universe that faced down Darth Vader as, as Boba Fett. Saying, as well, other than Warwick Davis playing more than one role. Yes, that's true. That's true. That's kind very of talented <laughs> Warwick Davis. Yes. Yeah. Very, very cool. So, um, sadly, uh, your character of Dak uh, met its fate in Empire Strikes Back. But had he not have died, how would you have felt about reprising your role in the, the sequel trilogy like Wedge? Yeah. You know, a lot of the, uh, the, the old school yeah. Rebel Alliance I'm representing right here. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I'd represent it in new films. Uh, how would you have felt about reprising Dak? Oh, I would have been great with it, you know. Uh, yeah. But I always maintain that, you know, if we're talking Star Wars legends, that Dak actually survived on Hoth. Really? Dash Rendar, yeah, Dash Rendar had a SAR team that was out there, and he pulled me from the from the wreckage, got me to a back to tank, and and revived me. But, but is not, it canon? but didn't, yeah, is, is it canon? No, but is uh, did he revive me enough to uh, to go back and be a starfighter? And the answer is no. So I ended up being a a tap calf tender, in other words, working in a bar, wow. which was fine. That's always fun. <laughs> of course, we all also have the upcoming Rogue Squadron movie directed by Patty Jenkins. Uh -huh. And I think the timeline is around New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, if I'm not mistaken. Is there a possibility of maybe an actor playing Dak or maybe you, maybe do, doing the, the de-aging yeah, if, yeah. if you're up for it? I don't know. I'd How do you feel about that? Very definitely be up for it. I mean, yeah. I think Dak, Dak has a backstory. Yeah. And Lucasfilm actually asked me to write up the backstory uh, oh, wow. for the Star Wars Insider, but it, it, it never got published. But I was talking to them really off and on for several decades. Yeah. But I was never in the right sequence of things. Uh, when we were almost ready to go, they decided they wanted to put all their effort into stuff to do with episode one. And then the last time when we were really close, I had a 4,000 word piece that I'd worked on with them for a year uh, for the 40th anniversary edition of The Insider. They said, eh, no, I think we want to go with um, episode seven stuff. So, right. But it's out there. It's, uh, you know, I posted it on Facebook. Uh, so, I mean, someday it might get used. Who knows? Wow. Guys, here it is. Awesome Con with John Morton, Dak from Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Also one of the Boba Fett's, if you didn't know. He's here at Awesome Con, and it's been amazing talking to you. It's been awesome. Thanks so much, John, for talking with us. Let's take on the Empire together. <laughs>
And what do you do with it when you have one? Will you do something good? We fundraise for the Michael J. Fox Foundation around the world. We've traveled to 28 countries, over 800,000 miles and over $800,000 raised. Who knows, maybe Asim Khan will get us to a million. So what year was this when you actually started on the DeLorean? 2001, so okay. we're 20 years in and the car is 40 years old. And may I ask, like, how much did it cost to put together all of this? Every penny we have and a little bit more. <laughs>
that's what I try to do. I try to do stuff that's different that people don't see because I think people like to buy different. Vampirella has been drawn a thousand different ways. Lady Death, I mean, you can go on and on and say about that, but you know, the Smurfette, again, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see that. And you're gonna see many people draw Smurfette very well. Right. Um, but again, different is where I try to separate myself from everybody else, because it's very, very competitive out here. Hey guys, Chachi McFly here at Awesome Con. And I'm standing next to a legend who I think he pretty much animated my entire, entire childhood. As you see here, this is Tom Cook. How you doing, Tom? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm looking around at your body of work. It's just really incredible. I, I can't believe it. Like you, like the Super Friends, He-Man, She-Ra, Flintstone, Scooby-Doo, um, Roger Rabbit. Like, how'd you get involved in all this? Well, I started back in '78. Uh, that's 1978, okay. and uh, I was a bus driver in L.A. Wow. And uh, took a class in comic book art. And the teacher worked at Hanna Barbera. And next thing you know, I got hired at Hanna Barbera based on my superhero drawings that he liked. Wait, so were you like a, as a child um, drawing a lot or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I used to draw a lot because I really fell in love with Marvel Comics. So I was Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. So I had all these drawings and I showed my teacher and he worked at Hanna-Barbera as a storyboard artist. And he said, they've got a class that teaches basic animation and I could recommend you for the class. Would you like that? And I said, oh my gosh, yes. And so I was in the class for three weeks and they hired me out of the class. The nervous part was I didn't know what I was doing yet. <laughs> and they said, well, you're gonna sit with an animator, you'll be his assistant okay. and you'll learn that way. So, and luckily, you know, it took. So what was your first project um, in Hanna-Barbera? Super Friends. Wow, so your first project is Super Friends, that's amazing. And that's the reason I was hired is because of the superhero drawings I did and he said, we have a lot of people can animate Fred and Barney and Scooby-Doo, but they have trouble with a human figure. And I really like your drawings, and that's how I got in. So like a Super Friends cartoon is probably what, like 22 minutes after commercials. Um, how long would it take you to animate like one show? Well, there was about 60 animators. Wow. And then at that point I was an assistant, and there were probably another 60 assistants. Uh, so, but we had to do a show every like week, week and a half. And uh, with He-Man, we had to do more than a show a week because there's 52 weeks in a year and there were 65 wow. episodes per One year. One year, wow. So that's when things really got got hot. We were really, really moving hard and fast. I mean, He-Man, one of the most iconic cartoons like ever for kids. Yeah. You know, it launched the whole entire toy line and now they keep bringing it back with different um, animated styles. What's your yes. <laughs> well, What's your opinion on the new animated styles of these new He-Man um, reboots. Okay, well, uh, I've been to Dubai, I've been to Ecuador, I've been to Mexico City. They love He-Man, okay? So you have billions of fans all over the world, so let's do a reboot and completely change it so all the fans are gonna hate it. <laughs> yes. It just makes no sense. Do one and make it like the old Filmation show, right. and any update you make is just make it a little bit more for adults because those five-year-old kids that it was meant for are now 45. Yeah. So make it for 45-year-olds, use the same sort of ideas and characters and make really good stories, and the entire world will love it. Were you on board from the original He-Man episodes? Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I started at Filmation in 1981, and we worked on Flash Gordon, Tarzan, and Bra uh, Black Star. And then after Black Star was over, we were worried because we really didn't have anything to do. And all of a sudden, Lou Scheimer, the head of the studio, came and said, we're going to be doing this new show called He-Man. And our first reaction was, He-Man? That's kind of like a, a funny name for a guy that works out, you know? Right, right. But once we saw the characters and stuff, we said, oh, you know, this could be a pretty good show. And, you know, it was probably the biggest show ever. I mean, we sold like a billion dollars worth of toys and everything in two years. That's so. the thing, like you, get, you, you talked about other shows you worked on, like it could be like one season for a cartoon, you never know. Right. Did you know from the beginning that He-Man was gonna be such a huge phenomenon that people are still talking about it well, today? And a normal season of like Scooby-Doo or whatever was 13 episodes, because it was just shown on Saturday morning. Right. Well, He-Man was on Monday through Friday. Right. So that's why we had to do 65 episodes for a season. So even though it only ran two seasons, 130 episodes 
is 10 years worth of animation that we did in two years. So uh, we really, and then they decided to do She-Ra so they could kind of keep He-Man in it, right. but still give something for the, the young girls to aspire to. And I've had many uh, like actresses, uh, like Summer Glau from Firefly. Oh, cool. In her panel, she mentioned that Shira was her favorite thing growing up. Wow. So I went over and gave her a, a autographed drawing of Shira, and oh, she okay, was cool. excited as heck. <laughs> and there's been a number of other people too that that's what really got them excited about uh, being a woman, you know, back in the back in the 80s. So do you have like one character from He-Man that was your favorite to animate? Yeah, well, my favorite to animate was Orko. Orko, yes. I and, Orko. and the reason is. He didn't have legs, so I didn't make him walk. I just could float, float in. Float, yes. <laughs> so much easier animation. Now, when you're animating, did you give any input in what the, how the storyline goes, or like any kind of like how the, the characters look at all? No, the uh, the designs were already made for the toys, right? Yeah, yeah and yeah. the the stories were already written. Storyboards were already made, so we had to follow the storyboard. Uh, the only thing that we had is they gave us a cassette tape with the voice track, mm -hmm. uh, because the voices are done first. Because uh, if you don't have a voice, you don't know what to animate. So, like I would say, if, if Skeletor was saying, look out in the storyboard, well, that doesn't tell you, you know, is he going, look out, or is he going, look out! Right, right. So we have to hear. So that way, we get an idea of what we want to draw. So basically, I'm the actor. You know, the voice gives me the voice, but then I listen to the voice, and I figure out what I want him to do while he's acting. And... Uh, that was kind of fun for me because I'm the type of guy that I, I love acting and stuff, but I'm too shy to get up in front of a camera and act in a play or something. But to be able to do it behind the scenes in, in drawings was perfect for me.